Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Fuzzy Mage Fight. Fuzzy Mage Fight is a game by Shadow Squirrel Games. It's made for three to eight players, takes about 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages, I would say, 10 and up. In the game Fuzzy Mage Fight, you're going to be basically controlling a fuzzy character, something like a shadow squirrel here, or uh, maybe this character called Rugged over here. There's a bunch of different types of fuzzy characters that have both a fuzzy and an essence form, and your objective is to put magic cards into your hand. If you at any point have eight magic in your hand, you can win, but if you are ever turned into an essence or you are linked with another player, you can't win. So try not to... Uh, trying to be killed by your opponents or turn into shadow forms by your opponents by them having to attack you and also try and gather as many cards as possible into your hand while at the same time defending yourself from your opponents. Can you achieve victory? Who knows? Let's find out down below. I will show you everything included in the game and then we'll go and have you a couple turns of the game. Fuzzy Mage Fight. So here's all the components for the game Fuzzy Mage Fight, everything included right here. First of all, there are a ton of different characters to choose from, as I talked about before, like the Shadow Squirrel and Rugged over here. There's Muffins and so on and so forth. I think there's about 11 to choose from. There's also a deck of playing cards here that you'll be utilizing in the game. A lot of them are going to have stuff like Magic in here or uh, Ability cards like this one here that lets you move Garble to any mage. And what is Garble, you ask? Well, to begin the game, all you're going to do is simply take three cards from the deck every player is going to select a squirrel or a character of some type and the person who picks the character last gets to go first but in addition they're going to take garble over here and garble says you know, when it's with you you have to roll a die at the end of your turn and if you get a five or a six you can pass it to the next player but if you don't you have to keep it with you and discard a card randomly he's basically a nasty little guy that's stuck with you but like i showed you before there's some cards in the deck that get rid of it uh there's also additional stuff like allies or um hired muscle and all these kind of things here at the beginning of the game if you would like as an additional alternative or uh, in included aspect of the game you can have players choose one of these allies as well as a character and then they have their three cards cards in hand to start. When you start the game, you're going to get three actions, whether it be attack, draw a card, or play a card face down on the field, unless it's a minion. Minions go face up. And uh, then at any point, if you get eight cards, uh, so if you have eight magic in your hand, you're going to win, provided you can avoid uh, dying due to battle or flipping over due to card effects or character abilities, because every character also has two passives on the first side and two passives on the back side. The front side is called the fuzzy side or furry side and this over here is called the essence side whenever you lose a battle or for some other reason you might have to go to the essence side in which case you can use these passive abilities on the cards but for the most part that is pretty much the idea of the game we'll take you down below and show you how to play it and then we'll come up and i'll give you my review of it so here is fuzzy mage fight and i went ahead and set it up for three players as you can see each of the players has a character and they also have three cards now the player who picked last as far as characters go is going to be this guy here and that's wyatt uh, or Watt, and he's going to also start with Garbel. So Garbel will just go right here with him, and uh, then everybody else is going to have their characters and their cards. We'll have these out as well. These are basically just things that will allow you to fuse with other players. If you turn into Shadow Form, it's an option you can use, so these will stay. But in the basic game, we're not going to use allies, so we'll set aside these guys here, like the Raccoon Mafia, or the Hired Muscle, the Possum Posse, the Skunk, Skunk Scott, Squad, and so on and so forth. We will talk about them in the review though. Um, and of course the extra characters, which we're not using as well, we'll go ahead and set these aside as well. And like I said before, every single character is going to get the fuzzy side and they're also going to get the shadow side. The shadow side happens whenever you lose a duel or whenever a player's ability makes you go onto the side. Uh, and the only way to come back is if you get fused together or if you roll the die and successfully roll a five or a six coming back into the game. And the reason why you don't want to be in the shadow side or uh, want to be fused is because you can't win the game when you're fused or when you're on your shadow side. Okay, so now to begin the game, we'll set these over here and we'll move the deck of cards to the middle. Uh, you're basically going to get three actions and he's going to go ahead and go first and you can choose one of, uh, you can do any order as many as you want up to three. So for instance, one action is to draw a card. You're simply going to take a card and you're going to put it into your hand and uh, don't show anybody else. These cards are hidden and only for you. Another action is to play any card you want from your hand face down on the field. Magic cards in general are going to have you win the game, but if you place them down on the field face down, it's going to give you 
three magic. And three magic is good when you're choosing to fight or to defend. So that would be two actions right there. And the third action, if you want, is to attack. When you attack, you can attack somebody's minion or somebody's character, for instance. And you're going to attack with face down and uh, magic cards in your hand that are face down and in your hand. And basically, if you attack, let's say I attack this guy here. I go, okay, I'm attacking with this one card, that's a three. And this one here, which is a four. This player can then defend with cards that are face down and in their hand if they want. And if they uh, can get equal to um, the amount that is being that is attacking them, they will defend the attack. And this player will lose his action and all cards will go to the discard pile. However, if he has not enough magic cards, so in this instance he would not have enough magic cards, he actually will turn to his shadow side. And when you're on your shadow side, you're not able to come back, uh, you're not able to win the game, and the only way to come back is either at the end of your turn, or the beginning of your turn, sorry, to roll, and if you get a 5 or a 6, you come back, or if you roll and fail, or choose not to roll, you're then going to stay on the side, and you'll have the option to fuse the player. Now, the only way you get to fuse is if another player is also on their shadow side, in which case you could fuse together if they say if you say it's okay, and then they both flip over, so now you're both back together. However, when you're fused, you can't win. But you get an additional action on your turn, and in addition, uh, the, the way you can uh, come back into the game and not have these attached to you is if A, you're the player who chose who has to fuse, on the next turn you'll have the option, you can't attack on the next, but the turn after that you can attack them, and if you win, uh, they go back to their shadow form, the fuse is broken, and you get to come back to life, or uh, vice versa, they attack you and you go to your shadow form and these get returned. So that is basically how to come back to life in the game, because if you're not alive, or if you're fused, you cannot win. Uh, so uh, let's just say he doesn't attack though, we'll say he just play. he drew two cards and then he played one magic card face down, and then that would be the end of his turn, he's gonna roll this five or six, hopefully he does, and Garb will pass to the next mage, in which case this mage now has his three actions. Now there's other cards in the deck here, like this one here, which lets you destroy any minion on the field, or minion, <laughs> and uh, He's probably going to save that because no minions. But there's one. So he's going to draw one for one action. He will play this minion. Whenever you play a minion, it'll be the only card you play face up on the field. So this will let him draw an extra card at the beginning of his next turn. And then he gets this one final action. And then he's done. The next player isn't going to get to go. And it's kind of a rinse and repeat, right? Maybe he wants to draw a card. He plays a minion. He plays another minion. That's going to let him draw more and more cards as the game goes on. Oh, and yeah, don't forget also to make sure you're rolling for this character here. Because if you don't roll a five or a six, you'll have to discard a card at random from your hand and that's going to eventually happen this character will end up staying with you and that's never a good thing and these guys are good because they're going to let you get uh, bonus cards on your on your next turn that's really really solid the only way to get rid of these guys is by cards in the deck or attacking another additional thing to attacking other than explaining how you use magic to fight whether it's face down on the field or in your hand when you beat somebody you'll also get to steal a card from their hand so that's another benefit to attacking players uh, that's the main aspect of the game you're just going to keep going around and around uh doing your actions as best you can. Here's another one. This one says, uh, your attacker skips their next turn. Pretty good. So if somebody tries to attack you, you play that thing, and they're going to skip their uh, next turn on you. And uh, you just keep going. There's a minion. Nice, nice. And now this player gets to go, and as you see, there's a minion on his side of the field, so he's going to actually get a free bonus card. So bonus cards are pretty solid. And then he's going to get his three actions. And like I said, the way to win the game is pretty simple. Have eight magic in your hand at the beginning of your turn, or at any time in your, in, time in your turn, and you will win the game fuzzy mage fight. Not as easy as it seems, though, but that's how you play the game. So just before we go into my review of fuzzy mage fight, let's go ahead and talk about some more of the cards in the game so you can get an idea of what fuzzy form looks like and what essence form looks like for some characters and then we'll also go and talk about the ally characters as well so first of all let's go ahead and talk about Gretchen over here Gretchen is gonna have Clawsome which is an ability when he's in his furry form or her furry, furry form all magic played from your hand is worth two during battle so all your single magic cards they're either three on the ground or one in your hand and now worth two in your hand a counterattack. Whenever a mage counter attacks you, you can counterattack uh, right back. Wow, that's pretty cool. And in her shadow form, nine lives. On a die roll of four or higher, you can come back into your fuzzy form as opposed to five or higher. And then Cat Burglar. If you choose not to roll to come back or you fail the roll to come back, you can roll a die and on a roll of four or higher, you can steal a card at random from a mage's hand. Pretty sweet. Uh, this character over here is called Philo. This character is really powerful. Fainting Goat. After using three actions, you can switch to essence form immediately and use the abilities. Uh, this other option is Potion Master. He can simply play a potion from his hand for free. In essence form, if he chose to flip there after his actions, he can search the discard pile for a potion and put it into his hand. 
force fuse. He can also force fuse with another player, making them take these fuse, like take a fuse card along with him. And then he's gonna get three actions as opposed to the plus one during the fuse. Normally when you're fused, you get a bonus action to four, he gets up to six. Now also though, when he forces the fuse, he can't attack that next player the next turn, so he'll have to wait. Um, but a very powerful card that flips back and forth, allowing for some really interesting abilities. And of course, there's a ton of other ones that all have their own unique abilities as well, which I showed you a little bit in the playthrough or the explanation of the game. Allies, how do they work? Well, Jerry, once during the game on your turn, search the deck for two magic cards and add them to your hand. Then shuffle the deck and flip Jerry face down. So there's different characters that do different things, uh, like just the basic hired muscle one. When you, if, you, if you pick this one with your, with your fuzzy mage, you get plus two magic for every attack. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty good. A lot of basic passive, ability, passive abilities. You can steal two cards at random from another mage. If you use this ability, roll a die at the end of your turn. If it's a one or a two, give all your magic from your hand to the Mafia, basically discarding those cards. And they're a double-edged double sword, these Mafia cards. Nevertheless, that's the basic idea of the game. You're gonna be playing cards, battling, attempting to get as much magic in your hand as possible, and when you start seeing somebody have a lot of cards in their hand, you have to do battle with them to make sure that they're not able to come back into play, uh, or at least to force them into their essence form, or fusing, however it works. As long as they can't win the game with all those cards in their hand, it is a tech to take that game in nature with some interesting little passive abilities on all the different characters. I mean, what makes it really nice is there's a lot of different abilities and a lot of unique aspects for all the different characters. They all function their own way. Like I said, Philo, he actually likes to go into the form in which he cannot in which he cannot win the game, but then he likes to come back because he forces other players to do that. This character is very good at stealing. The rugged character, this one is the uh, very good fighter. Very good fighter. And so on and so forth. They just all have their own unique aspects to all the different cards, which makes them all interesting in the way you play the game. Minions are very good, but they can be attacked. And uh, when you start playing a lot of them, you become more of a target. Like in Munchkin, where if you're level nine, it's gonna be very difficult for you to win. Players will notice that as well in this game, Fuzzy Mage fight. You're gonna be like, oh no, I'm too close to winning. People are ganging up on me. It's better to be secret about it. Make sure you're just not causing a lot of waves and pulling and pulling. Uh, overall, the game's really fun. It's a really basic to take that game with some brilliant artwork. This reminds me of, I guess, what you call a furry? Those are the different characters. They're kind of like humanoid style, style, uh, I don't know what you would call it, furry animals, right? And uh, it's really great artwork. I really, really like it. It reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy's as far as the artwork goes. They're like creepy yet cute little uh, fuzzy bunny rabbits and, and cheetahs and all kinds of things like that. And then when they go into their darkness form, it reminds me of when the Five Nights at Freddy's when everybody's like sleeping, it's nighttime and you're like watching the cameras and stuff and boom, there it is right there to scare you, right? Uh, it's fun. It's an enjoyable game, but it's one of those games where you know you're going to be interested in or not. It's a family style card game, but it can play pretty much anybody. Definitely kids are going to like this game. Uh, kids that like Five Nights at Freddy's are going to like this. So if you're a family, if you got a family and you got kids that like that game, this is one little fun game that they're going to enjoy as well, just based on the artwork alone and how you can do battle with each other. The game's very, very simple and easy to play. If you're a more like advanced style gamer, this game's not going to be for you. If it's something like, you know, you're more interested in more deep thinking and strategic combat, at, tactics this is just it's got a little bit of all that in here but not a huge amount it's it's more it, it's more of a fun light-hearted style family game definitely check out down below if furry magic or furry mage fight is gonna be interesting for you for me I found it fun and it's enjoyable and I prefer it with multiple players three players is not enough for this game Play this game at least with five players, is my in my opinion. You want a big group doing a bunch of craziness in the game. That's what brings out a lot of the fun in the game. Uh, overall, a fun little game with some characters that are definitely up and down as far as what I believe to be strong or less strong, but at the caveat that it's a take that game. So the more powerful you are, the more likely you're going to be targeted. So be careful what you choose, right? All right, well, down below, like I said, check it out currently on Kickstarter, Fuzzy Mage Fight, a really fun, really cute little uh, family card game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you're interested in this game, check it out down below in the description on Kickstarter, Fuzzy Mage Fight. Got some really great artwork. This is That's straight up my favorite part about this game is the artwork for sure, because it's really, really nice and it's fun. Also, go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com. Currently on, uh, we're doing giveaways um, on the web, and also uh, you can go ahead and check us out right here. Like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. Please, it does help. We do greatly appreciate it. I'm begging you, <laughs> push the bell button. I, I, just enter my giveaways on the side. It's better, you can win stuff. Also, check out my friends, everythingboardgames.com. 
and the giveaway key. Two great sites that can do a lot of great stuff. Even more giveaways, blog posts on my own site. I, I'm only one man, what can I say? And don't forget to uh, say hi to my friend Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. He does some great reviews and tutorials as well on Kickstarter. You can find him everywhere, and that's for good reason. He does some great stuff. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to battling you with fuzzy, cute um, mage creatures next time. <laughs> <laughs>